Hi everyone, you are watching the Business Portal, your gateway to business trends and opportunities. I'm your business evangelist, Lloyd Luna, and this is Creative Business. Today, the headlines that made another exciting business week, a wrap-up of big news and interesting events that shaped the last seven days of Philippine business. Next, Galilea's fearless and adventurous pursuit of knowledge has inspired her to impart his legacy to learner, adventurers, and today's evolving world. And academician, Ms. Rory Rowena Mati. And for our second guest, he is an entrepreneurial management graduate of the University of Asia and the Pacific. A thesis project that was made into a reality while her expertise or his expertise is on implementation, I think he has with him his love of his life. Partners in life and business, Mr. Ruden Gonzalez and Sel Castle Gonzalez. In my top eight, the reasons to do business in the Philippines according to Philippine Business Registry. And finally, the Creative Business Alphabet of Achievement, the A to Z of setting your goals. We are now on letter U, unlearn. <laughs> Let's begin the hour with business news that shaped our week. Oil companies to cut prices by 2 pesos. Wow, napakagandang balita para sa ating lahat na may sasakyan at gumagamit ng sasakyan. Oil companies are given until Monday to bring down their prices by 2 pesos per liter or, or they will face an investigation by the Department of Justice. So, paano yun? Kapag ka, hindi sila nagbaba, iimbestigahan pa sila. So, ibig sabihin din nun pala, you can actually not raise your price Anyway, you will be subjected to, to an investigation or something is wrong there. But members of the House of Appro Appropriations Committee are assured by Energy Secretary Jose Rene Almendras that the government would compel oil companies to reflect the steep drop in world crude oil prices and their pump prices. Peso and other Asian currencies inch up. That is another news. After the release of a statement from the U.S. Federal Reserve that it would keep interest rates at record low until mid-2013 to stimulate a still sluggish growth of the U.S. economy. The peso, together with other Asian currencies, strengthened. The local currency closed at 42.475 against the U.S. dollar, up by 4.5 centavos from Tuesday's finish of 42.52 to a dollar. Traders said that the pronouncement by the U.S. Fed that it would keep its near zero interest rate for about two years somehow eased concerns of investors over a weak global economic recovery led by the slower than expected expansion of the United States. Low interest rates are meant to encourage people to borrow and spend, thus help spark economic growth. BSP reports how much? $162 million in net foreign direct investments inflows to foreign direct investment inflows to the country recovered in May as favorable macroeconomic fundamentals enhance the risk appetite of investors. Take this. Last Wednesday, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas reported that the FBIS posted a net inflow of $162 million in May, reversing the $31 million net outflow registered in the last same month last year. In the first five months of this year, cumulative net inflow amounted to 714 US dollars, million US dollars, rising by 15% from 619 million dollars a year ago. Now, gross inflows in the five month period reached 767 million dollars, while outflows amounted to only 53 million dollars. The BSP said investor sentiment on the Philippines improved given several positive economic indicators and the easing concerns on the global economy. The central bank said these indicators include a manageable increase in the prices of goods and services, a well-performing banking sector, and the declining budget deficit of the government. Good job. Those were the news that shaped our week. Let's go to our guests. Live from the Global News Network studio in the Philippines. Here's your business evangelist and host, Roy Luna. Interesting day we have in here. They have 21 branches all over Metro Manila and several pro provincial branches. Their program aims to help children become better in mathematics and English. 
the CEO of Galileo Enrichment Learning Program, our first guest, Ms. Rowena Mati. Hi, Rowena. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, who is Galileo? Galileo is our mentor. He is your mentor. Uh, um, the name of our enrichment program is Galileo Enrichment Learning Program. Uh, what we do is um, we teach children from 3 to 12 years old mm -hmm. math and English. Um, these are the basic subjects they need to know in school. Right. So children go to regular school, mm -hmm. but they attend Galileo classes twice a week right. um, after classes for about 30 to 45 mm -hmm. minutes. Right. I'm interested how you came up with this uh, kind of uh, business concept. I mean, I want to really realize where you're coming from. Um, I grew up in a school. Mm -hmm. My mom put up a school when I was two years old. Were you forced to be in that school? Well, were you doing choices? No choice because no it, was, choice. it is in our house. <laughs> right. But um, I look forward to going to the classroom part of the house mm -hmm. because it was really fun. Right. So um, I started there and when I went to college, um, I saw my mom mm -hmm. uh, in the school. So it's really, I saw myself really doing edu um, helping my mom later on. So, so, like, so, so like it's like it's, it's, been, it's, it's been part of your life. Yes. Kung baga, uh -huh. nakita mo and then you decided na ito yun. Uh -oh, this is something I want to do because I, I would see my mom. She's so happy working with children right. in the community. What did you take in college? Um, I took up psychology and marketing because mm -hmm. I come from a family of entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. I thought my father wanted me to take business. Right. But I put in the psychology because I thought I really wanted to be in the education side of it. Okay, so these are strategic moves. Well, yeah, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, there are some uh, logic in what you're doing. And, uh, and then um, when I graduated, I, I insisted that I get into education. So um, after graduation, I went to the States. I took up a course in daycare administration. How did the negotiation, uh, uh, I mean, how did it go? Is it an easy negotiation that you go to the education sector? No. Ano yung business oh. ng, ng, ng parents? Uh, my, my dad is into transportation and heavy equipment. Eh. They mm -hmm. make replacement parts for jeeps. Come on! I mean, uh, hindi na pa nag-expect na nandun ka. I mean, heavy equipment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh -oh. cannot, cannot. But be. they also have other businesses. Right. Um, but I really liked what my mom was doing. Um, maybe it's uh, it won't earn as much. Right. But um, educating the minds of the children is really something more fulfilling, I think. How, how does it uh, look like? I mean, your life uh, as, as a daughter of uh, entrepreneurs, coming from an entrepreneur family? Um, I think uh, the demands are more because um, on weekends, instead of going out with friends, we were required to help out in the business, whatever business my dad assigns us to. Sometimes it's the school. If it's the school, I'm very happy. But sometimes he would also bring us in his business. Or when there's construction, let's say he's building uh, an office, he would bring us to the construction site. Really? He would tell us to pick up nails. Wow. Because the carpenters will mm -hmm. nail something. Right. Pag na bend yung nail, bend your... they throw it. Okay, so you so, pick it uh, up. Ah, so he'll tell us, pick it up. What do you do? You sell it? No, um, no. he asks someone to... Oh, make, uh, straighten to straighten again. it and then they can use it again. So, yeah. I mean, it's so simple. My mother would cry because naawa siya, di ba? Ang daming lamok. <laughs> But um, those are simple things right. that teach you discipline and entrepreneurship. Can you say no? No, you don't have a choice. Okay. And that's how we get our allowance. He will not give us allowance just, hindi yan privilege, just because anak ka, bibigyan ka allowance. You mm -hmm. go to work on Saturdays. Wow. And now, then... Now, I, I try to, I just try to compare. That system, eh, hindi, ma, hindi mo madalas makita yan doon sa mga middle class. No? Because sa middle class, most of the time, they have choices. Right, and that sort of discipline actually led you to uh, becoming a person that you are now. Okay, now, um, what, 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 what do you think is the, this, the, that, that Galileo solves, the problem that it solves? Um, when I helped out my mom, she already had the school, so I didn't want to change anything. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't feel like I just wanted to be helping her. Mm -hmm. So I thought, um, if I'm going to come in, I should bring something new. Mm -hmm. So um, while okay. I was... Hold it there. You want to bring I think, something new? Yes. Okay. Where are you getting those ideas, concepts? Um, 
That's something that I learned from my father, which he learned from his father also. So, so ito, itong mga ganito na, eh, kasi hindi built-in sa lahat ng tao, di ba? Na before they come into something, hindi built-in sa kanila na kailangan meron akong ibigay. Uh -huh. okay? Ang sinasabi natin lagi, ang ginagawa natin saying, okay, how can I fit in? But your, your framework, I mean, the way you think is a sort of different. Para for, automatic. For me, akala ko automatic. Mm -hmm. um, now, later in life, I realized, oh, nga, no? it's, a little, it's a different way of thinking. My, fa my grandfather, Maximino Juan, is a dentist. Mm -hmm. But during the war, um, to make money, it's not enough to be a dentist. Right. So, na nung paalis na yung mga Amerikano, mm -hmm. the jeeps that they had, mm -hmm. naiwanan nila dito. Right. Some binaon, mm -hmm. some naiwanan na lang anywhere. Um, he, he saw the opportunity in that. Right. They restored it and they made replacement parts for it. Right, right. And he always tells um, his children, um, when you want to get into business, look for a need and fill it up, and definitely you'll succeed. Okay, now let's talk about the need. Uh, we're talking about education in general, uh, Philippine education system, mathematics and science. Mm -hmm. What system do we use? Um, Filipinos normally are not good in math. Mm -hmm. no? So, kaya I, I, I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> and um, up to this very day, you still hear parents say, Nako, hindi ako magaling sa math, anak ko na lang. But the more the children hear that, the children also feel, yung parents ko nga hindi right. magaling, di ako din. Yeah. So it goes on. Any subject but mathematics, ladies and gentlemen. Any exactly. subject but mathematics. Exactly. Okay. So I myself, I wasn't good in math. But I thought, if others are good, and, they, and some who are not good became good, mm. there's a way to solve this. Right. That's why math and English yung pinasukan po. Right. So because this is something that's needed in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. The usual way we teach math now is, um, we start kasi abstract, di ba? Count up to 10, memorize ng bata yan. Mm -hmm. Count up to 20, up to 100. But they don't really understand the concept. Right. So, so it's just like, uh, ilalagay mo sa utak ng mga bata, 1 to 10 yan, no? Uh -oh. I-recognize mo yung figure, pag yan tuwid, uh -oh. malamang 1 yan. One yan. Uh -oh. okay. So, uh -oh. pag yan, yeah. dalawang bilog, uh -oh. 8 yan. Uh -oh. And then it goes on, problem solving. Mm -hmm. You memorize all the solution, you memorize all the formulas, right. but they understand how you got to that. Okay, that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually a nationwide, national problem. It's a national problem that we have, according to her. How do we solve it? It's, it the, the concept kasi is like, uh, it's more an abstract, yes. you're, you're saying. Yes, it's yes. more of an abstract. Uh -huh. Ano yung solution natin dito? Okay, when we started, um, we started muna teaching the children with the le regular math. Mm -hmm. um, starting from the lowest level, making them understand each concept. In Galileo, we teach them in five different ways. So if you're a kind of learner that learn from uh, using pencil and paper, there are worksheets. Okay. But if you're more visual, there are flashcards. If you're more tactile, yung you learn through touching things, there's a tactile wow. element. So five really? different ways. There are books and there's a computer which the children really love. I'm, I'm starting to think if I can enroll in, in Galileo. Ay, nako, it's so much fun. <laughs> Pwede. Um, so when they come to the center, there are five centers that they go to. Mm -hmm. And they stay for about 30 to 45 minutes. Who identifies kung saan sila? The teacher. Pre, the teacher. ano na yon. Pero... They have the freedom to say, Teacher, can I do this first? But when they go to the center, they set na yung So, in na. other words, nilalagay niyo yung mga tao do sa tamang learning style uh -oh. na fit sa kanila. Yes. Okay, uh -oh. good. So, parang, we call it nga the telescopic approach. Eh. Mm -hmm. So, parang si Galileo, the teacher, when the child comes in, it's like looking through a telescope. You try to find the learning needs of the child. Right. And you focus on that to be able to bring out the best in the child. Ah, was it the reason why you put the name Galileo in there? Also, and um, he's a very good mathematician, mm -hmm. and a fearless learner. So okay. we want the children to be that way. Sige, meron tayo ditong paglalaroan. I uh, want to be a child for once for, for a while. So, so recently, Singapore math um, became the trend. Mm -hmm. um, Ten years ago, um, Singapore started using Singapore math, no? mm -hmm. and they topped the studies. There's what they call TIMS. It's the trend in. International Math and Science Survey. So 10 years, top sila lagi. So they might be doing something right. So a lot of schools started, educators started looking at the way Singapore teaches math. Okay. So How do they do it? So three years ago, we started teaching this in Galileo centers. Um, what's important in their way is concrete, pictorial, and abstract. So babalikan natin. Sa Pilipinas, abstract muna, di ba? Right. So hindi mo maintindihan. Memorize mo yan. Oo. Okay. Here, concrete, they have materials 
they have objects to show to the children to make them understand okay. what one is. is. Okay. So, alimbawa, one. So, you know that one is a value. Na yan yung, okay. yan yung, ano niya? A value yan. Oo. Pag two, yan yan. Okay. If you want to make it equal, two and two are like this. Right. So, hanapin ng bata kung, kung saan niya ilalagay yan. Kasi uh -oh. pag nilagay ng bata, uh -oh. dito nilagay, oh, hindi, hindi, hindi equal, equal yan. No? At saka, alam mo na mas mataas ang two sa 4. Right, right. Diba? Oh, sorry, Alam mo, mas mataas ang 4 sa 2. Oo. Oh, oh. Alright. Mas, ah, sorry. Mas yeah. mabigat oh, siya. Oh, okay. Mas mataas ang 5 <coughs> sa 2. Sa 2. Okay. So, the child understands it. And then, if you move on a little, you go to addition. Mm -hmm. What do you add to 2 to get 5? So, halimbawa, nilagay ko dito. Uh, bata ako eh, diba? Uh, bata ako, kaya uh, pwede ako magkamali. Uh, dito, uh, okay, 8. So, hindi pwede. Hindi pwede. Oh. Baka dito. So, susubukan mo yung next. Hindi pa rin pwede. pwede. Saan kaya? Wait lang, yung tama na. Oh. <laughs> ano tayo? Yung tama na. So, magbabalance na siya. Oo. Oh, pag nag-balance siya, you know. That you know that 2 and 3 is equal to 5. Is equal to 5. Yeah. Okay, so we are, dinuturuan natin yung mga bata ngayon in their own way to find it oh. and to, to do it themselves. No? Yes. And then it can without, take a Without memorizing, time. no? Oo, oh, but they enjoy it and they understand it. Mm. And so the challenge is, kasi for the teacher, the challenge is to make the children understand it, diba? Mm -hmm. So they also have different ways, like um, boxes actually represent numbers. Okay. So they have Sige. toys like this, which actually is equivalent to one, mm -hmm. two, three, which eventually will, will have meaning. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say one like this is equal to one box. Mm -hmm. So if you know that this is three and you subtract one, mm -hmm. ang matitira dalawa lang. So in your mind, mm. it na form. Because it's, it's very visual, you know. It's very visual. Not to mention that you can touch it. Uh -oh. So yeah, it's an interesting concept, and I will be going back to you after a very short commercial break. This is an interesting thing, ladies and gentlemen. I wish meron yung daycare center when I grew up, <laughs> uh, but. Pero now a lot of schools are, I know, are starting to adopt it. Right, exactly. Next, ladies and gentlemen, it was a thesis project that was uh, pursued after, uh, and now it has been helping those with special minds and hopefully hearts for more stories. We have Mr. Rudin Gonzalez and Sal Casas late, later on the program. Stay tuned. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're still watching Creative Business with me, Lloyd Luna. And interesting, before we pause for a commercial break, we were doing this uh, little uh, Lego thing, and uh, my next guest will be doing also this one. <clears throat> so, tingnan natin to. From a simple thesis idea, now it's been helping a lot of people. So, the idea of really helping people, this is a sort of a of an interesting business model because they are not only earning, but they are also helping with a very heavy emphasis of, on working. So before I give the interview, um, Ruden and uh, and Macy Sell, okay? Kailangan masagot niyo muna to. So bigyan ko kayo ng tatlong piraso. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Ba kailangan oh, equal dito. Nako mabigat 'yan. Oh, kailangan tatlo. Oh, no, bilisan mo. Mauubos yung oras. Oh, one, one na lang ako. Oh. Oh. Deep. Five. Eh, ano ba yan? Tama ba? Now, this is an Ateneo graduate, ladies and gentlemen. Aha. Okay, now it's equal. Yan. Now, I can give I can give you the interview. So. Tama ba? It's equal. Mukhang, mukhang tama naman. Ayan, balansyado. So, this is something that we did not grow up with, right? Yeah. So, nandun tayo sa generation na pinamay memoria, and then basta memoriahin nyo. Yes. Okay, and then may flashcards, etc., etc. You get your reward. How's your business look like? Uh, right now, uh, quite okay. One Alban Place, this is a place where you help a lot of people. Yes. Right. Yeah. And this is where the Academy of Hope is actually based, this mm -hmm. thing? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about uh, the history. How did you come up with this kind of business? You, is, this is your father's business, primarily, was it? Oh, actually, or, uh, not lang to, eh. this is the rest house lang namin. Okay, during out. the 90s. So, when my relatives came there, they saw a place na pwede raw nilang, you know, to have their get-togethers, mm -hmm. have their seminars, whatever. Tapos right. nakita ng father ko, oh, baka pwede kumita to. Right. So, yung una, walang kita yun? Wala talaga. As in, lahat invite-invite uh, uh, lang yun. Mm -hmm. That's where it started, sa resort. Anyway, 
nung college ako, uh, madamot kasi ako eh nung college. Kasi lahat ng classmates ko during my time at uh, UANP mm -hmm. in Ortigas, uh, lahat sila group, group work, group work. Mm. Ikaw? Ako, mag-iisa. Kasi nung time na yun, I was, uh, we were a couple of ano, friends lang sa South. Mm -hmm. So most of my classmates were from here, sa Ortigas. Right. So pag gumawa ng group project dito, talo ako. So niisip ko, bakit ko gagawin to in the first place? Pupunta ako, tapos hindi naman, di ba? I was thinking long term back then. <laughs> Saan ang gagaling yung ganyang klase yung pag-iisip? Uh, uh, kasi I'm the only son lang din eh. So, that's, I think, feeling ko, yun nga, mag-isa lang ako. So, I should work on myself lang. Okay. When did you meet, uh, meet her? Sel? Ah, uh, na ba tayo kita? I forgot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Where? <laughs> sa simbahan, di ba? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, sa church kami nag-meet. Yeah, I picked her up sa simbahan. I saw, up? <laughs> yeah. Arang ganun, okay. I saw her sa back ng pick-up ko. <laughs> well, literal talaga pick up. Ano, nakisakay ng walang yeah, nakisakay siya. Nakisakay siya. Nakihit okay. siya. Okay. That was the time na, na loner ka? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Back then. Yeah. Depressed? Yeah, ma ma depressed. Madali bang i-handle yung mga ganyang klase ng tao? Mga depressed? Oh. Um, so far, madali naman i-handle. Wala naman ko. <laughs> Nagagamot na naman ako eh. Right, right. <laughs> Nagme-meds ako. Acute psychi uh, psychiatric facility, facility. Yes. For, for depressed. Mm. <laughs> You're the first client of your dad. <laughs> Ay, hindi pa. Before pa tayo yan, siguro, ano, kami na yung kliyente. Right, right, exactly. So, you guys are working on this project for how long? Uh, eight years. Eight years. Mm -hmm. And let's briefly discuss the project. Mm, okay. Uh, so, we used to be a treatment rehabilitation facility back then, 2004. Mm -hmm. Then, during 2005, we want to conceptualize a different kind of treatment facility, yung hindi matotroma yung tinatawag na patients. But at Algon, we call our patients students. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to come up with, uh, to, to accredit ourselves sa DOH as mm -hmm. acute psychiatric facility. Mm -hmm. Bago pa naman nun, accredited na rin siya sa DOH ng mm -hmm. treatment and rehab. Right. But right now, we are aiming to be a behavior, mm -hmm. resource, and development center. Right. So we don't only cater um, sa mga uh, addiction or those with behavioral problems or psychiatric disorders. But we want to, to basically study the behavior mm. and also train health workers. How, how, does, how, how tough is it working in this kind of, uh, you, you can call it advocacy, this, this type yeah. of business? Uh, how, how tough is this business? 24-7? Yes. It's a vocation actually. Eh. Right. Yeah. Kumbaga, 24-7, 365, we work. There's no holiday for us. Mm -hmm. Lagi kaming on call. And we actually live there in the center, in the hospital. Right, right. Yeah. So, hindi pa pwedeng may, may pera ka lang, tapos magtayo ka ng ganitong klase ng, ng negosyo. What does it take, aside from you have the, the, the capital and the accreditation? Um, actually, ano, uh, blood, sweat, and tears ang nabuhos ng family namin dyan. May, may pinagagalingan ba kung bakit nyo na-identify yung, yung ganyang klase ng, ng negosyo? Actually, we don't see it as a, ano, as a business. Eh. We see it as an advocacy. Right. May as, pinagagalingan ba? Yeah. Uh, there's a need kasi. No? There's a need that uh, ganito lang naman yun. Eh. If you want a successful business, you have to be focused. How can you be focused? Right. If you get your head straight. Right. So, loner nung araw, nung bata. Uh, ano pa ba um, nung bata? Ano ko eh. I, I, I love to help. <laughs> no, social life. No. I love to help people. Like, Pag may problema yung mga friends ko, ay, ako yung laging tinatakbuhan. Kung maga parang shock absorber. Oh, yeah. pag may problema, no? Yeah. Lagi kang nandun. Yes. Hindi kaya ikaw ang dahilan ng problema. Um, hindi <laughs> <laughs> naman siguro. Ay, naman si ikaw yung lapitan kasi oh, may problema. Mukha ba akong problema? <laughs> Do I Mukha ba siya problema? problema? <laughs> oh, she's a problem solver actually sana namin. Yeah. Sa right. I right. troubleshoot all kinds of like problems that we encounter daily in the right. center. Mahirap makipag-deal dun sa mga tao na normal, right? Yes, actually, it's quite harder, yeah, sa normal. Right. Kapag ka challenge, challenge yung mga tao, I mean, they, they have, they, they, they came up with this, uh, uh, they are under treatment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Gano, mas gano kahirap? For us, um, as a vocation, hindi siguro. Pero for those who are starting, siguro mahirap kasi pag nagwala, sumigaw, mm -hmm. or nag-mood swing yung isang student, 
medyo mahirap kasi you have to calm them down, you have to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. So, basically kasi sa amin, ang ang concept kasi ng ibang ng ibang center is they are restrained, tinatalian sila, kinukulong sila sa isang isolated pl- facility, a uh, place na parang jail. Mm-hmm. Sa amin kasi, it's really different kasi um nakukuha namin sa pakikipag-usap lang and then nagka-calm sila. Really? Yeah. yeah. Na hindi mo na kailangan talian, hindi mo na kailangan injection. So we don't even use ECT. Oh. Yeah. We we're the only ano uh, center that doesn't use ECT. Yeah. Yung we don't electroconvulsion never, therapy. Never. Never. I have a client who's been 10 years na nagii ECT. Nung dinala sa amin, she's now managing her own business in Makati. Wow. Cash. Uh, it's a it's a department store. Actually. Right. Right. I don't want to. Wow, really, yeah. and uh, this this success stories, no? these are su- success stories. Um, how do you manage? How do you manage the, the facility? Uh, uh, lead kind of leader that you are. Well, we lead by example, of course. So, hindi pwede yung uh, sabing if you wanna wake up, sabi sa mga tao, wake up ganito six o'clock. You be, you must be sure na dapat before six gising ka rin. Hindi pwede yung para bang salita lang. Right, right. We undergo the training as well. Yeah. Ako, six months kami nag-immersion. The program that yeah. you give to the students, kami rin yeah. talagang in-immerse in- namin din sa sarili namin. namin. By calling them students instead of patients, malaki na yung... Yeah. The dignity. Medyo mataas talaga yung dignidad ng tao. Right. Kasi di ba pag sa ibang centers, so we call them patients. Parang... Ano, malala ba to? Uh-huh. Parang ganun yung feeling. Pero when we call this, we give them yung skills. Mm-hmm. We Learning. give them learnings. Right, right. So, it's a school actually. Mm-hmm. So, it's a school where they are housed in the facility. Right. So, we have um, subjects, they attend the classes, and the nurses, psychology, social worker are the teachers. Right. So, we train them also. What did you take in college? Uh, entrepreneurial management. Public relations. In which school? Um, Santa Isabel College. Santa Isabel. Okay. Um, the the value of education that you got from from college, how important are they? Well, for me, it's uh, very important because it's para one of my building blocks in uh, nation building, especially when when I got my uh, MBA in Ateneo. Uh, there, I realized that uh, it's not important how much money you have, but how many people you help. That's nation right. building. So that, that's the basic philosophy behind all, of, all, all these uh, yes. activities? Yes. Right. Because my father used to be a seminarian in Ateneo. Mm-hmm. Yung Jesuit teachings nga, ng nation building, that's where everything came. Natanong mo ba kung bakit siya hindi tumuloy sa seminaryo? Well, nakita yata ang mother ko eh. <laughs> <laughs> Kaya gano'n. Okay. At wala ka rin balak mag-seminaryo? Dati, kinukulit ako ng mother ko. Okay. Uh, ituloy. Kasi lang, out of the ten brothers and sisters ng father ko, walang tumuloy. Walang tumuloy? Okay. Ni madre, wala. Okay. Plus, nakihitch pa siya dun sa likod. Yeah, nakita ko agad si Sele, so... Okay, so... Yeah. Okay. Tough. Okay. Good. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> let's talk about this thesis idea. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, lahat ng estudyante nag-graduate, uh, I mean, may mga courses na may, may mga thesis. Yeah. And let's talk about your thesis. How, how did you come up with, with this and make it really feasible? Really apply it? Oh, okay. Well, it started with the resort now, which I stated earlier. Na, na we had this resort that wasn't earning mm-hmm. during that time. And there was a need for a place, so friends, companies, ganyan, na they need a place to be, to have an exclusive event there. So, dun ko, dun nag-start yun. And at the same time, binigyan kami ng, ng course ko, entrepreneurial management, na uh, set up a business, which eventually will prosper. Mm-hmm. Yun yung basic thinking kung during that time. All right. Yeah. And interestingly, yung yung profit na kinikita dito sa sa resort dito sa one one algon is it? Yeah. One algon place. Uh, binibigay nyo rin doon sa advocacy niyo. Um, basically, what we yeah. do is um, yung mga nag uh, book sa resort. Mm-hmm. Yung fund na yon goes to the students of the academy. Subsidized so, students. So we train them yung skills nila. Right. Once they graduate at the academy, they can work at the resort. So it works together. Okay. So kung magagawa kung fully treated ka na, 
we and then you give the opportunity pa yeah mm. to reintegration in the community yeah that's a reintegration program uh, yeah program nila so para after care right so ginagamit natin yung business natin at the same time na as a reintegration uh, facility yes yes mm. tutulong tulong sila sa housekeeping tutulong sila kitchen. sa kitchen marketing mm -hmm. yeah yes. so this is the 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 base of changing lives really yeah we want them to be productive citizens Wow. I think that's the goal, talaga. You go there and productive. You go out. Uh, you productive. have any plan of duplicating yourselves uh, anytime soon? Well, actually, um, in a training, yeah, we we're putting up a training center. Actually, what we're doing right now is we are training yung mga health workers. Right. That's how we duplicate because mm -hmm. we cannot duplicate. After. I mean, duplicating yeah. your places as uh, somewhere else. So okay. what we do right now, maybe, siguro ang pwede lang namin gawin is to help yeah. yung mga health workers mm -hmm. to equip themselves kasi, in helping kasi others. Because, di ba, dapat nandung kayo sa sa iba't ibang lugar? Yeah, yeah. we travel a lot. Yeah. That's no, I mean, there should be a a, uh, a, a place like a this. Place like this. Actually, it's quite capital intensive, kaya medyo mabigat magtayo. Right. Yeah. I actually, around 100 m is mm -hmm. not yet enough. 100M. Mm, it's not, it's not yet enough. Yes. Para blood one, and sweat. 101M. <laughs> <laughs> what about that? What about that? Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, really. So, um, marketing-wise, who is doing the marketing for, for you? Well, me. I go, I do my rounds sa mga hospitals. I mm -hmm. talk with the psychiatrists. Para, kasi pero, sila yung nagaanin. Pero sabi mo nga, ano, pupuno na rin, you know? Yeah, yeah, medyo napupuno. Pero mabilis din kasi yung ano, yung paglabas eh. Mabilis kasi gumaling. Okay, bakit mabilis sila gumagaling? Okay, because um, our treatment consists of the biological aspect, we tap that, mm -hmm. the psychological aspect, the social, and most importantly, the spiritual. So it's a holistic approach. Okay, wow. Nothing more question. No, no more. No more. <laughs> no, no more. Nothing to ask. <laughs> Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, after the break, we are going to talk about more about, you know, still the business and your experiences. Text or call us and we'll ask your questions. I'll be back with this week's top eight, the reasons to do business in the Philippines according to Philippine Business Registry. Stay tuned. You're still watching Creative Business and we're back with this week's top 8 uh, the reasons to do business in the Philippines according to Philippine Business Registry. Number 1 is the workforce. The Philippine workforce is one of the most compelling advantages the Philippines has over any other Asian countries. With higher education priority and literacy rate 2. Strategic business location 3. First class lifestyle 4. Abundant resources 5. Low cost of doing business 6. Liberalized and business friendly economy. Seven, unlimited business opportunities. <laughs> really? Number eight, developing infrastructure for global growth, well developed communication, transportation, business, and economic infrastructure. <laughs> really? <laughs> do you agree, guys? Yeah. What do you think? Yes, I agree. Um, where, where are we going as a nation? Well, uh, sabi ni Pinoy, di ba? Matawid daw na daan. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't know where that road leads to. Uh, at least it's matuwid daw. <laughs> yeah, at least. Uh, hindi bako bako. Where are we going? Ako, I believe, I, ako, I think positive. I believe in the Filipinos. Right. We're, we we have a very good future. Right, especially. Just focus on education. Right, especially if we adapt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this kind. Uh, we are, we're talking about nation building. Sabi mo sa akin kanina, hindi mo basta, hindi, itong, itong gawain to ng Academy of Hope and uh, Algon Place or whatever that. Hindi para sa lahat. Yes, hindi pa sa lahat. turnover ng mga nurses dyan sa inyo is mabilis. Yeah, quite. Mm -hmm. It's because of the vocation now, which I was telling you about. Uh, not all people can work in a place that is very stressful. Especially mm -hmm. kasi every day, you deal with uh, these kinds of disorders. Yeah, depression, bipolar. Addictions, behavior, yeah, alcohol, any kind of addiction, yeah. Kailangan medyo yung emotional strength mo is very, you know. Have you, have you ever had a chance of talking to the Department of Health? or any uh, government organization to say that, you know, probably you can get some pork barrel from congressmen, you know, fund this. Uh, yeah, we've tried uh, way back pa ng 2004, pero we weren't that very successful with them. Right. Yeah. Will you still try? Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. If I get elected as president, I'm going to give you some funds. Oh, thank you very much. Kung, ano. That is if. <laughs> if. But you know, in the States, they really support these things. Yeah. 
for special yeah, exactly. children. Wala Mental health. Wala, wala akong oh. makitang ibang dahilan na hindi sila supportahan eh. I mean, kumbaga parang, dami-dami mong ginagasas sa ibang pagkakagasan and this is like basic. Maybe they haven't met the right person yet. Right. But if there's a person who'll understand it, they'll really support Actually, this is in na nga actually eh, itong ano, mental health. Uh, mm -hmm. eh, di ba, may lumabas na sa states like Katanin Sita Jones, yung pagiging bipolar niya. Mm -hmm. Since then, dumami yung patients namin, ay, students namin na mm -hmm. bipolar disorders. Right. Nagsilabasan sila. Kasi we are trying to solve, it, ito kasing mga to, it, I think this, these are parts and parcels of a good community, di ba? Mm -hmm. Kung itong mga to, maayos mo, and then you can expect a better community. Yeah. Diba? Yeah. Kasi kung maga parang ina-isolate natin sila, ina-ayos natin sila para makabalik sila na maayos. Yeah. In that case, tanggap na tanggap na sila. Mental health, mental wellness. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, um, looking at this, um, how do you plan to, to, how do you plan to make this work for so many uh, public school and private school So many institutions out there, educational institutions. Um, well, right. Is this only exclusive for Galileo? Uh, no, right now a lot of schools have adopted Singapore Math. There are more than 20 schools. And then this year, um, Assumption, Miriam College, St. Scholastica's College adopted it. And we're looking at more schools adopting it. Um, the public schools are looking into it already. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a good way to teach math and to learn it. Right. So for us, it's really actually an advocacy also. Mm -hmm. That's why on October 8th, mm -hmm. we're going to have uh, okay. a conference. A conference. Uh -oh. Wow. Um, for us, we would like to introduce this to a lot of Filipinos, the educators, the parents, because um, it's really the best way to teach math right now. That's mm -hmm. why Singapore has been the top for the past 10 years okay, so. in the tests and surveys. Um, this is the Singapore Math Festival. This is the very first here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, the main speakers are Queen Ali Chua with her son Scott Lee Chua. And we have math coordinators from different schools that have been offering Singapore math. Right. This is going to happen on? Um, October 8th, that's a Saturday, from 8 to 5 at mm -hmm. the AIM Conference Center in Makati. Okay. At sa mga magre-register, simula ngayon hanggang sa September 15, mm -hmm. There's a discount. They There's can a discount and they can call our number. I like our number. Eight okay. four five one two three four. Eight four five one two three one, four. One two three four. <laughs> How did and you get that number? <laughs> no, numbers. <laughs> um, and then uh, we have a website also, mm -hmm. uh, GalileoEnrichment.com, and right. we have Facebook and Twitter, right. Galileo Enrichment. What is the difference between enrichment and tutorial? Um, there's a big difference. Um, enrichment uh, is more proactive. Tutorial is really quick fix. If you're having a difficult time with the subject right now, you um, train the child because of a test tomorrow. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, that's what happens. So you get your tutor today, uh -oh. so you can be uh -oh. prepared tomorrow. Yes, or if the child is really having a difficult time in math already, then you go to a tutor to help him with the, the, the topic within mm -hmm. the week or the next few months. Um, for enrichment program, when the child enrolls, um, we encourage them to enroll as young as three years old mm -hmm. so that they will not experience difficulty in math and English anymore. Right. And math and English is the very basic for all the other subjects. So cut it short, nahihirapan ng mga bata hindi dahil hirap talaga sila o dahil mahirap talaga yung subject, kundi uh, hindi sila na prepare Yung class. foundation. So enrichment will give you the right foundation to be able to catch up right. with school enrichment level. Enrichment or the Galileo. Yes. Okay, visit GalileoEnrichment.com for more details sa mga yeah. offerings po nila. Uh, and the, yeah. number, and the number is 845-1234. We have 24 branches. We have in Metro Manila and we have provincial branches okay. now. So pwede sila doon, no? yung mga uh, nanonood nating, yeah. yung mga taga-probinsya nating mga yeah. nanonood. Okay. Uh, so, sir, where do you get in touch with you? Kapag kami, kailangan nila yung lugar mo. Oh, yeah. Uh, they can call us at 0917-5555, uh, apat na 5 yun, 030 uh, that's our marketing uh, phone. And mm -hmm. algonplace at hotmail.com. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, ma'am and sir. We really appreciate your presence and this kind of thing. <laughs> no? Talaga namang hindi masagot ni sir kanina kaga. <laughs> uh, time under pressure. So uh, thank you for, for giving us the, for sharing your expertise and in time with us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in this week's Alphabet of Achievement, we are now on letter U, on learn. You cannot take some more if you are already full. There are things that you already know, things that you already mastered, and things that you are already familiar with. In the last 12 months, something is added to your program, your mind for program. You have been taught to operate in a certain way or live your life in a certain style. 
in the last couple of years, we learned many things about our work or business or studies. We simply had a handful of discoveries that even shocked us, but somehow they gave us some value. Because of these learnings and realizations, we now become wiser. As a more intelligent individual, we dare not to do things that didn't work and just be satisfied with the things that worked. But I think life is a consistent cycle of learning, unlearning, and relearning. If you want to achieve your goal, you need to, be, you need to recognize the unlearning process. What is the unlearning process and why? Because what we have learned may no longer apply at this time of history. The world's greatest invention happened after inventors decided to forget about what they learned first. They learned that because of human beings have no wings, we cannot fly. Second thing they knew, we invented the first airplane. They said it's impossible for us to go to the moon. The second thing they know, they just discovered another universe. The examples go on. Things that we knew need some verification. Whatever we did right or wrong in the past may change places. Who knows? If we keep these learnings, then there's no other way to learn more. If there are no more, no more ways to learn, there, there's no more to develop. Let go of what you know and give way to new information and see where it can still take you. It doesn't hurt when you let go of some old beliefs, when you, don't, when you know it no longer works. It makes some sense when you embrace new tools that are necessary, tools like this one, to succeed in this time of history. Maybe whether it's Filipino math or Singaporean math, whatever that may be. That's it for this edition of the Philippines' most dynamic business talk show. I would like to thank Bobson for my jeans and Merger for my suit. Your ideology for this week. You cannot take some more if you are already full. Watch our past episodes at creativebusinesstv.com. Add us on Facebook at Lloyd Luna. Follow us on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. This is your business evangelist Lloyd Luna saying millions and millions and millions of thanks.